Hey, Dan Blewett here. Let's go over the sinker and some of the grips. Uh, but before we do, make sure if you haven't already, hit the red subscribe button. I want to send you tons of new pitching content. I've got videos lined up every week. So if you hit the subscribe button, you become a subscriber of my YouTube channel, you're just going to get notified quicker and you'll be up to date with everything new that I put out. So today with the sinker, it's, it's one of those pitches that with some pitches like the changeup, my goal has been to standardize it. I've been advocating around the internet for why do we have five different changeup grips? No one seems to know why the changeup is slower. What's the action supposed to be? So if you watch any of my other videos and I encourage you to, you know that I teach one grip and I'm not saying that that grip's gonna be right for everybody, but it's gonna be right for most people. Uh, and I want everyone to understand that there is a consistent spin and action that we can get out of the, out of the changeup, out of one pitch. Because with a curveball, we know that all curveballs have forward spin. The cleaner spin they have, the better they are, right? Uh, with sliders, they all have a set spin. The finger placement is slightly different, but the action and the spin of the pitch is like pretty consistent. Uh, with the sinker, that is also generally true, but there's a lot of different grips, and this one does take a lot more tinkering uh, to get it right. So for me, I threw a sinker at different points in my career, and usually they were a response to me changing my arm slot or changing something in my delivery and pitching a little bit different and trying to figure out how I could get outs in a new way. So I threw sinkers in two different seasons, and at times it was really, really good, and both the times when it was good, my arm slot was a little bit lower. So in college, when I was a high school kid, I threw really high over the top and I had a hammer, like Barry Zito curveball, and that was how I got into college. But as I got into college, I couldn't throw enough strikes that way, and so my arm angle slowly lowered to like a normal kind of three quarter instead of a kind of high over the top. And as it lowered, it opened the door for me to be able to sink a ball and to sink a change up a lot better. And for me as a, you know, when I retired, I was, you know, like a typical three quarters, maybe a little bit high three quarters. Uh, I wasn't like way over the top, but I also wasn't a three quarter pitcher either. So as I got higher for me personally, my ball flattened out. That's why I was a four seamer guy, curveball guy, and that worked very, very well. I didn't throw a sinker when I was higher over the top, but at different times I'd, I'd toy the pitch, i teach the pitch, and here are my big takeaways from myself, from teaching it, and from uh, a lot of the guys that I played with who threw really, really good sinkers. So number one, uh, there is no universal grip. A two-seamer is a sinker if, it's, if it doesn't sink that much, and a sinker is a sinker if it sinks a lot. So really, you could throw a two-seam grip just like this. So obviously like the standard is just two fingers inside the railroad tracks, usually pretty close together. And if you throw it like this and it has a little bit of arm side run, then typically we just call it a two-seamer. If you throw it like this, and like one of my buddies who pitched in the big leagues, he just had this grip, just very, very standard, and thing went zoom. Like it just, it just sunk like crazy. And uh, that was a sinker. So you could throw this grip, and it has a little movement, and it's a two-seamer. You throw the same grip, it has a lot of movement, it's a sinker. So there's really kind of a double standard about what a sinker is. It really is defined more by the action than the grip itself. Like a two, you know, a sinker grip that only kind of moves a little bit, we still kind of call it a two-seamer. A two-seam grip that sinks a ton is a sinker. So standard is just being here, and then we're trying to get a little bit of tilt to the ball. So we can throw it straight, and it's uh, and the backspin is slightly tilted, so it has a little bit like that. So it's going this direction, but it has a slight tilt, so it's not going in the exact backspin direction as it's traveling then it'll start to come back over the plate a little bit. The other way we can make it move is by pronating on the inside of it a little bit. So it has a little bit of like this one seam action as it flies forward towards the plate, which is the same sort of spin that the chain up that I teach has, and that has very heavy sink and run. So when we do that, we're gonna have to get on the inside of the ball a little bit. So you can kind of accomplish it two ways. You can get on the inside and sort of tilt it. So as it flies this way, it's kind of almost got like a four seam orientation as it goes that way or you can pronate through it a little bit and it's gonna have that one seam as it goes to the plate. So then the question is, okay, if that's the action that we're looking for, how do I make it do that? And that is a lot more of a personal question. It's gonna take tinkering, it's gonna take a little tinkering with your arm action, and I don't necessarily advocate that you should change your arm slot as a pitcher. You should find the slot that makes you the best version that you can be, and for some guys it's lower, some guys it's higher. I think it's actually a pretty like genetic kind of natural thing, uh, but, um, tinkering with the grip is important. So obviously standard two seam grip, also a two seam grip just like this because it's gonna fly the same way. And then really guys just start to tilt it a little bit. So they start to snake their fingers down the ball a little bit and they go here so they can try to catch that seam or just throw right through that one seam a little bit too 
So then again, they're getting that sort of one seam spin. So there's a lot of ways you can hold it. There's a lot of ways you can throw it. But again, typically fingers close together, and then you're trying to work down this seam, overload the ball slightly on the inside. So as you throw it hard, you naturally pronate inside it a little bit, whether it's here or it's here or it's here. It doesn't really matter. It's really just gonna be outcome based. So play catch with it a ton, get feedback from your throwing partners, get feedback from your catchers and bullpens and from your pitching coach and get them to tell you which ones are better and experiment, experiment, experiment and figure out what the best version is gonna be for you. But the grip itself, it's gonna just kind of be, again, any of those little variations I just showed you, it's gonna be whatever works best for you and after that, as long as you have an idea of what you're trying to accomplish and how easy it might be to accomplish depending on your arm angle, because if you're really high over the top, it's going to be tough. Um, those are sort of the factors that are involved in throwing a good sinker.